Hello, and welcome to Yesterday, Today, and Forever, a virtual ministry of the Churches of Christ. It is our desire to present to the 21st century person the faith of the first century Christians. We seek unity through the acceptance of the faith that was once and for all time delivered unto the saints, a system of faith which first began to be spoken by our Lord prior to his crucifixion and was later confirmed to the saints by the apostles and inspired writers of the New Testament. Thus a faith from yesterday, to today and into forever. Our speaker is Brian Barrett, who preaches for the church at Bear Branch, in Spurlocko, West Virginia. We encourage all persons interested in the faith of our fathers, to open their Bibles, as we search the Scriptures, for these eternal truths, which can lead Christians back into unity as the family of God. Now, here is Brian. Good morning. We left off last week in the latter part of the eighth chapter of the book of Revelation. Uh, we were talking about uh, the one who uh, is identified as wormwood or bitterness, and we were we were talking about uh, the war between Josephus and his uh, Jewish soldiers and allies against the Romans. And as we were looking, we see that a third part uh, of the land, the area, again, not the complete, not the whole. Uh, and as it left off, it said, And I beheld and heard an angel flying through the midst of heaven, saying with a loud voice, Woe, woe, woe to the inhabitants of the earth by reason of the other voices of the trumpet of the three angels which are yet to sound. Uh, the first part was just that, the first part. You know, we, we have uh, been discussing all the way from back in the sixth chapter, the fulfillment of a lot of these things, the effect uh, that was being uh, had upon the land, the defeat of the uh, soldiers who... Uh, Israel had put their hope and trust in that they might uh, deliver them or at least give them some time to uh, prepare. And as we come into the ninth chapter this morning, uh, we are going to begin looking uh, at what this angel is pronouncing these woes upon for uh, the sounding yet of the trumpets uh, which are to sound. And as we come into the ninth chapter, uh, John says, And the fifth angel sounded, and I saw a star fall from heaven unto the earth. And to him was given the key of the bottomless pit, and he opened the bottomless pit, and there arose a smoke out of the pit as the smoke of a great furnace. And the sun and the air were darkened by reason of the smoke of the pit. And there came out of the smoke locusts upon the earth, and unto them was given power as the scorpions of the earth have power. And it was commanded them that they should not hurt the grass of the earth, neither any green thing, neither any tree, but only those men which had not the seal of God in their foreheads. And to them it was given that they should not kill them, but that they should be tormented five months. And their torment was as the torment of a scorpion when he striketh the man. 
And in those days shall men seek death and shall not find it, and shall desire to die, and death shall flee from them. We're going to just kind of stop uh, at that point. We may go a little bit further, but um, as we look at this uh, particular image, it is a unique image uh, of this star falling to earth. We uh, see in the previous uh, chapter there, uh, this star that fell, this leader, this important person, which was Josephus. And again, he took on the persona that we have here of the wormwood of bitterness because of him. And as we look at this, we see a star fall from heaven and the earth. And we're told to him was given the key to the bottomless pit. As we look at this chapter, we're uh, probably uh, looking at the uh, loosening of the forces of Satan upon those who would not repent. Upon the city of Jerusalem, and we see that <coughs> excuse me, later on <coughs> in uh, this chapter, but we see this star falling from heaven to earth and uh, it was given to him uh, the ability to release out of the bottomless pit, the abyss. Uh, we think of it as the, ab uh, the abode of the condemned. Uh, Luke uh, 8 and verse 31, we can read about that there. Uh, but Jesus said he saw sa Satan as lightning fall to the earth in Luke 10, verse 48. And later on in the 12th chapter, verse 9, uh, he is identified also there. And so it seems kind of interesting, but as we come down uh, into this, we see that Part of what brought on the destruction of the, uh, the city of Jerusalem was a lot of infighting that took place uh, within uh, some of what we might call the political groups uh, along the way. Of course, we have uh, the uh, Levitical high priest. We have all of those, the Sanhedrin, those who are in charge uh, still attempting to run things the way they wanted to run them. And then we also see a couple other groups that are in the mix, and one of those are the zealots. And these were the individuals who greatly opposed Rome having any influence over Israel, and so they should be independent. But then we had the other group called the Herodians, and they were the ones who, again, tried to win the favor of Rome, uh, believing again that, you know, if they were just good citizens of Rome and they didn't cause a lot of problems, you know, we, we just go along to get along. So we got these, these three groups. And as we see in Jesus' day, the Sanhedrin uh, the high priest, those, they were concerned about keeping uh, their place and their nation as it was. They uh, had uh, their uh, little reign and rule. So we have these three groups, and each of them in their own way had their uh, shortcomings, and so the image that we have here is that amongst these, after the battle, after they attempted to have this battle with Rome and it failed, uh, losing uh, you know, their, their soldiers, their army, at least a lot of it, then uh, in this image, in this picture here, we see the fact that uh, Satan kind of, uh, from at least the uh, 
symbolic sense, turns loose the demons or the evil spirits to uh, have reign and rule uh, within these, uh, this group of these three individuals that are uh, controlling Jerusalem and vying for uh, the future. And ultimately, when we read history, we find a lot of infighting. We see a, a lot of them battling and fighting uh, among themselves. And so uh, Satan is uh, referred to as well as uh, the angels as fallen ones. And so again, nothing could be more uh, appropriate, a star falling down from heaven with the key to the bottomless pit than uh, the devil himself, who is the uh, ring leader of those angels which have fallen. And God seems to turn loose all kinds of things upon the inhabitants of the city of Jerusalem uh, because, again, that's his judgment. And so we remember that again, and it mentions it here, that there are those who have the seal of God in their foreheads. There were those who were, uh, again, Christians, those who were following after the things of God, taking warnings, and uh, they were protected by following the things which they were told. And so out of this came a great deal of smoke. And of course, smoke uh, obscures, it clouds, uh, it chokes things, uh, it causes us not to see clearly, it makes it difficult uh, to, to be in the midst of that environment. And that's what we really see in this is that within the, the city and the areas, uh, it becomes very difficult. Men will seek death and not find it. Now, you can always find death in the literal sense. It's not as if they weren't able to die. But it speaks about the despair that descends upon them as the smoke and the torment and the things uh, that we're about to see and are seeing here uh, begin to happen. Uh, one of the things when people become very depressed and things are not working out for them, what is something that they start thinking about? A lot of times. Death. You know, they, they begin to consider suicide. Now, there's a part of us, uh, you know, that in that situation tries to, to prevent that, tries to give us a reason uh, so that we don't. Sadly, lots of people uh, fail and, and they do commit suicide. But the idea is in this image that these people are brought to so much despair because of the events and the circumstances that take place. And with the failure of this battle in the preceding chapter, the question comes up, what are we going to do? And of course, these three groups all have uh, different views. The zealots say, we fight to the last man stands. We, we make our stand, we draw, you know, these are the ones that we find on Mount Masada. These are the kind of people who, even after Jerusalem was destroyed, uh, found the stronghold there at Masada, and they held out as long as they could, thumbing their nose at uh, the Romans. They made the Romans work exceedingly hard to get to them. And when they found them, what did they find? People. They committed suicide. You know, they held off from the inevitable, uh, but then when they saw that the Romans were going, uh, were at the very last part,